There's a new Samsung DeX. One UI 6 has arrived on the Galaxy Tab S9 series. It largely refines the user experience and adds some nice aesthetic touches as well. But Samsung slipped in one big change that they neglected to tell a lot of people about. Today, we take a look at the new Samsung DeX and compare it to the classic DeX experience. Let's go. Okay, before we dive into the direction that Samsung has taken with this new DeX in the Galaxy Tab S9 series, let's recap classic DeX on the Tab S9. The concept is to basically take your massive screen and utilize that real estate to give you a desktop-like experience straight from your tablet. Effectively replicating a laptop uh, but something that's a little bit more portable and mobile effectively. The DeX interface is pretty familiar. You know, you have the taskbar down the bottom that docks all your apps. You have effectively a start menu. You've got your notifications on the right bottom corner. It's basically like a Windows environment. It creates and facilitates a, like a an area for, for productivity and getting stuff done. I have a whole video on DeX. You can go and check out every single way you can use DeX. That's not what this video is about. This is the new Samsung DeX. Just wanted to recap the classic version. DeX in that classic form pretty much works on all of Samsung's flagship devices. Galaxy S, Galaxy Fold, they all require the external monitor, but the experience is the same as what the classic DeX is on your tablet screen. The tablet's unique though, that you can activate DeX from the tablet itself, or you can of course connect it to an external monitor or wirelessly. You have that freedom of choice. The thing is, because it is a tablet first, you might not want to interact with DeX in that form. You might want to use the tablet screen and you might want something a little bit in the middle to facilitate productivity. One UI on tablets has come a very long way. And a lot of that's down to the fact that Android's finally paying attention to larger displays, almost through force by Samsung that that's happening because Samsung just kept producing tablet screens and needing that to sort of match the experience that the users expected. It's gotten to a point that if you operate the tablet without DeX, you still get some productivity features that enable you to get stuff done using just standard One UI. Samsung, in particular, offers probably the most amount of multitasking features straight from its core One UI version. You just have to go into the advanced features menu and take a look at the multi-window menu to see some of the ways that you can activate multi-window to allow you to continue to get stuff done just from standard One UI. You know, you can add in the multi-window handle. You can swipe with two fingers to activate multi-window. There's a lot of different things in here that you could toggle to make productivity a lot easier. They also added the taskbar a few generations ago, and that is definitely something that facilitates productivity because you can dock your favorite apps down the bottom and quickly switch between them whilst also launching multi-window from that as well. With all of those added features, it sometimes feels less of a need to have DeX dedicated on the tablet itself. But the thing is with those steps, the extra steps that you need to do to activate things. You need to swipe here, you need to go and turn it on in advanced features. It's a little bit extra and you have to know where you're going just to be able to activate it. As well as turning on those features, the taskbar is quite limited. You've got the apps that you can set there, plus you've got only four recent apps that can be sort of docked down the bottom at any one time. Plus you can hide the taskbar as well, so you can maximize the screen real estate. But again, that's not really what productivity is about. You need quick access through the taskbar if you want to be a bit more productive. Apps don't also launch natively into a resizable environment. They will go full screen because that's that's just what the app is telling One UI to do, which is the opposite of what DeX stands for, creating resizable windows to give you a bit more stuff you can do straight from the one display. And between normal One UI and Samsung DeX, there's quite a chasm that exists from either this extreme or that extreme. So I guess to solve that, Samsung have developed the new Samsung DeX. From what I can tell right now, it is just on tablets. I haven't seen this crossover into the S23 Ultra or on my Fold 5. It's certainly present on the Tab S9. When you first launch DeX after the One UI 6 update, uh, it gives you a little pop-up box to tell you that this is the new DeX that you've launched. It turns it on by default, straight away. That's either a good thing or a bad thing. It's a good thing because it lets you know it's there, but it's a bad thing because you definitely aren't expecting it. And the thing is, if it wasn't for that pop-up, you'd be forgiven for thinking nothing's happened because effectively this new DeX just replicates your One UI environment with 
very subtle changes. The thing you do notice is everything sort of moves down slightly on the home screen. And that is because the taskbar that usually sits there slides down to your permanent taskbar down the bottom. Normally it's that sort of sort of taskbar that sits there. It just moves down into a smaller taskbar and that shifts everything else down with it. The whole purpose of this is so you can seamlessly transition into productivity without needing to get used to a completely different environment. Everything is there the way you've already set it up. When you do start using it though, you do notice the subtle changes that Samsung have made to the UI to give you a little bit more extra when it comes to productivity. I'll compare it to classic decks in a moment, but compared to standard One UI, you notice a few things. First, despite it being the home screen, the taskbar gets docked down the bottom permanently. It's very different to the way the normal One UI looks. That's got, like I said, those large apps down the bottom whereas the taskbar sort of shifts down into this permanent dock down the bottom. Something else to note too with it is that that taskbar is not limited to just four recent apps. You can open up multiple apps and it will continue to add them to the bottom right corner if you've closed them and hold them open there and allow for easier access. That is very similar to classic decks in that when you open an app, it docks it down the bottom. That is where the similarities end though to classic decks because that taskbar down the bottom functions a lot more like a Windows taskbar in that it's pretty much clean with nothing there to start with. And then as you open apps, it adds stuff to the bottom. You can customize that classic Dex taskbar any way you like by pinning apps to it, where it's a little bit different to the new Dex in that it pretty much pulls from the taskbar that your One UI is using. The classic Dex will keep it open, but because it's a new environment that you have to set up individually, there's no reference point for it to pull from. The new DEX uses One UI as its reference, and that's the bit of a difference in terms of the taskbar and how they operate. Another difference is for opening apps. As I said before, standard One UI has some steps that you need to take to facilitate multi-window. It's it's great, you know, you've got the swipe gestures here, you've got the taskbar dragging and dropping here. A lot of it is built for sort of smaller displays or not quite as large displays as what the Tablet Line Ultra especially is. There's just extra steps that you need to take to allow it to happen. Another thing too is that when you open an app, it launches it into full screen. It doesn't open it into a resizable window straight away. The new DeX is different. It will launch apps into a resizable window or a pop-up window to allow you to have multiple open at once. It's a little bit more intuitive in that way because it's replicating DeX in general as opposed to One UI. The other thing you notice too is that multi-window header that you sort of get in standard One UI that you need to tap to see is there by default. You will see that whether the app is in full screen or whether it's in pop-up view, that little heading that allows you to minimize, resize, put into multi-window, that's there all the time. This whole interface is designed with a little bit more convenience for a mouse and a keyboard. It allows you to resize using the mouse a lot easier, a lot more fluidly, drag and move things around. That's the nature of it. That's the purpose that it's been designed for. Classic Dex obviously operates in this way as well, with a few extra caveats that you get on top of it. Classic Dex has the transparency button there showing, whereas in the new Dex, you need to go into the three dot menu to make the pop-up window transparent. That's an extra step, whereas Classic Dex doesn't have that. They both have the pin button where you can pin an app to be always in front. So that's a similarity that exists. The new Dex has something that the classic Dex doesn't, which is a multi-window button to go into split screen, where you press it and it puts it into one half of the display. Classic Dex doesn't have that, but there's another way you can get around that using the keyboard that I'll go into in a moment. By a moment, I meant right now. With classic Dex, you have the option to use the keyboard shortcuts to actually facilitate snapping windows to different parts of the screen. Hit the command key and left, up, right, down, and pretty much it will follow where you want it to go. The new Dex does not retain that. It drops that away from it, and you have to rely solely on being able to drag and drop things into place. Classic Dex as well, if you grab a pop-up window and drag it to the top of the screen, it gives you an outline to let you put it into full screen. That doesn't exist in the new Dex as well. Now that's sort of some of the function differences that you'll notice with the new Dex. And as you can see, it's very similar to One UI. But let's dive into the settings of both Dex options to see where the main differences lie, things that you can customize, for example. Before we get into that, fortunately, Samsung has still retained the classic Dex option. If you go into the connected devices menu and you go into Samsung Dex, you'll see there's two things there, new Dex and classic Dex. What's annoying is you can't switch to classic Dex when you are in new Dex very frustrating. It tells you and prompts you to exit decks first 
before you can then click classic and go start decks again. In the future, Samsung should definitely add a toggle that you can jump from new decks to classic decks and sort of cycle between all three. Because I think that process is a little bit of a barrier to entry for consumers, especially if they're picking up a Samsung tablet for the first time. And especially because this new DeX appears to be only tablet for now. There's no hint that it's coming to any future releases of Samsung phones. So hopefully it just isolates for the tablet. But yeah, it would make it easier to jump between DeX environments if they enable a toggle a lot easier. Now, if you want to connect this new DeX to a monitor or wireless display, you, you can't. Basically what will happen is if you plug it into a monitor, it will just mirror the screen. You won't get the option to choose resolution, change the size on the display. It pretty much will be fixed to display the size of the tablet screen and will just mirror your actions of what you're doing. If you want to connect DeX to a monitor, wireless or wired, you need to have classic DeX selected. That is frustrating because if you've been using new DeX on the tablet screen and you then want to plug it into a monitor or connect it wirelessly, you have to go deep into the settings to change it to classic DeX before you can do that. Otherwise, every time you press the DeX button, it'll just launch the new DeX, which is a little bit frustrating. Back to settings, that's what I was talking about. The new DeX has no settings. Well, except for one. You've got the auto start when the book cover keyboard is connected. One setting, that that's it. I guess the rest of the settings kind of just play around with normal One UI settings and it'll impact the Samsung DeX settings. Well, that's not quite true because some of the things are grayed out. Taskbar, for example, is grayed out when you're in the new DeX. Modes and routines is grayed out when you're in the new DeX. So there's actually things that get stripped away when you're in the new DeX that you can't change. Classic DeX, packed to the brim full of settings that you can tinker with, especially when you're plugging into an external monitor. You've got the option to go wireless or wired. You've got the option to mirror your DeX screen on both displays. You've got the option to change the resolution when you're connected to an external monitor. You've got the keyboard shortcuts that uh, mirror a standard desktop keyboard a lot more fluidly. That sort of stuff is baked into the normal classic DeX settings, whereas the new DeX, you can't tinker with any of that. Really, Samsung has made DeX Lite or One UI Tab. It's not something that should have the DeX moniker. It really doesn't deserve that in my opinion because a desktop experience is what Samsung DeX stands for. And this isn't that because Samsung DeX is Samsung DeX. Anything that shares its name needs to be able to replicate that experience. And this doesn't. That is it for this week. Uh, you will want to be subscribing to my channel, especially with everything that's upcoming in the next few weeks. This is the place to be for all of your Samsung post unpacked content. Make sure you subscribe and like this video as well. Also go visit me on my socials. I've got Twitter slash X and also Instagram and I'll see you in the next one. You.